Yes guys, hello, what's going on? My name's Nick and welcome to Real Reds Talk. I hope you're all doing really well. Um, now the title of the show today is Naive Neville. What's Gary Neville done now? Um, for anybody who hasn't seen it, Gary Neville put a tweet out last night that basically said, um, let me just get it up now, bear with me a sec. I remember a time when United players, managers, executives wouldn't be seen in their local Italian after a draw at home, let alone being knocked out of, the, of Europe. And this last week, we've seen a global tour of F1, concerts, cricket and UFC events. This lot are tone deaf. Um, very damning from Gary Neville there. Doesn't seem like he's happy at all. Um, so obviously, there were some fans and pundits who wasn't happy with this. And he did receive quite a bit of backlash, the likes of Gary Lineker, TalkSport, for anyone who gives a fuck about TalkSport. And then you, you've got, you know, your, your obvious football fans that are on Twitter and stuff going on in him. So, but yeah, there's, there's a few things that crossed my mind when, when I first um, initially saw the tweet. First of all, let's not pretend that you never went out, Gary, in your footballing days. Like, in what, how long was he at United for? 20 odd years. You're telling me, you know, he never went out, never did anything, stayed in all the time, never went to events with, with his mates and stuff like, come on, it's it's a bit hypocritical for me. Um, and I remember being at the Overlap Live uh, about a month ago, it was, or maybe just a bit over a month ago at Manchester Apollo when they had, um, they had Gary Neville and Roy Keane talking about the, the crazy nights out that they had when they was with Nicky Button and stuff like this. Um, even certain times in the season when it wasn't particularly rosy, he was still fighting for a title. Uh, they may have dropped a few points here and there. So, for me, Neville coming out with this, the, it's, the hypocrisy is kind of highlighted for me. Do you know what I mean? Um, that was the first thing that crossed my mind. The second thing was I've seen the same people on Twitter, and you know who they are, the, the people who are head of fan channels and stuff like this, going on... on um, if you remember when Marcus Rashford and Jesse Lingard um, went on warm weather training, I think in Dubai. And this was after when we just got smashed off Watford, smashed off Liverpool, smashed off City. And everyone, um, and these guys, sorry, we're, we're going in on them, completely going in on them. Um, but now these are the same people who were coming out and having a go at Gary Neville for tweeting this. And I'm just thinking like, surely there has to be a double standard here, surely. Um, it seems to, people seem to moan when it, when it suits their agenda. And I don't like that in the in the fan base. I see that far too often. So that was the second thing. But ultimately, I think it you know it is naive of Neville to come out with this, especially in the modern era. Like, what are we saying? Footballers can't enjoy themselves now. Is that what we're saying? They should be robots and live at home and you know think about the mistakes that they've done. I mean, unless you're Ronaldo, because Ronaldo's an absolute alien. Um, these these guys are humans and just like us yes they need to take accountability for the reactions on the pitch 100 percent and yes it will frustrate people seeing them enjoy themselves because naturally we've had a miserable season this season watching some dire results um and if we're seeing them smiling saying oh, you get these people probably thinking you should be putting it on the pitch what are you enjoying yourself for you dickhead blah 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 but you, ha you have to look at it from a human perspective and, and take that kind of stuff out of it. For me, anyway, that's that's just my opinion. Um, and I'm probably, you know, in the minority of that. But, yeah, what, what do you want these boys to do? These men to do? Sorry, do you want them to sit in a corner listening to My Chemical Romance, think, sulking and feeling sorry for themselves? No, I don't want that. I don't want the players to do that. So, if I was in their shoes, having a tough time on the pitch, the first thing I would want to do is get away and relax. Trust me, especially when you're at Manchester United because the, the criticism is real. And I've kind of been, I feel like I'm, I'm at fault myself a little bit. Like, obviously, we know players like Harry Maguire have been abysmal this season. But he shouldn't be the captain. He, pro he shouldn't be playing. It should be Lindelof and Varane. We know this. But sometimes I think criticism gets taken a little bit too far. I think it, I think it starts getting insulting and then you're insulting the family members and stuff like that and I haven't been critical of that but at times I've been like slab headed fucking shit he's a fridge you can't like you start getting a little bit personal because you're obviously emotional during the game and I think fa as fans we need to balance that a little bit um, and maybe support players a little bit more um, that's the message I I'd want to put out there um, in that situation but Again, like I said, I might be in a minority with that, but that's that's my genuine opinion. Um, and that's what, what I speak to you a lot about. But I've seen, don't get me wrong, I've seen <coughs> Rashford and other players putting in extra work. 
So on the flip side of things, I've seen Scott McTominay, Fred, Bruno, Rashford, all these kind of guys put in extra training sessions, um, working on the stuff. And even when Jesse and uh, Marcus was in Dubai, they were still training. They were still working on, on the, um, the technical side of the game and the fitness and stuff like this. So uh, people only take things out of context and see when they're in the club and when they're doing stuff like that and then they'll relate it back to whatever fits their agenda again so um the only thing is with jesse i kind of I, I, it's a slightly different story because I, I think his head's you know we know his head's at a different place probably west ham um because that's the club he keeps flirting with online and stuff and he obviously had a decent spell there and i think there is a certain aspect of adding excess fuel to the fire um, Jesse doesn't help himself in that respect, so people are going to be even more critical than what they are. God help us, because United fans are extremely critical, and rightfully so. You know, we as United fans, we expect standards to be at a certain um, to be at a certain level, and I, I understand it completely. I just I don't think it merits abuse towards players. Um, but I mean, back in the day, especially in the I think back in the nineties. These players like Gary Neville, Roy Keane, stuff like that, they were getting bladdered down at a local pub. And they didn't have to worry about everyone on social media spying on him. So it's easy for people to say, you know, these these guys shouldn't be going out, they shouldn't be doing this, especially after bad results. Um, it's, I, I know, at the risk of repeating myself, it's extremely hip, hypocritical. Extremely hypocritical. And I just thought it was a bad taste for Neville to come out and say this. Um, he's probably thought, you know, I've had enough of these players. The, the performances they're putting in, they, sh they shouldn't be doing this. And again, I get it. He's probably just thought, I've had enough of this shit. It's like waking someone up in the middle of the night and asking them a question. You're going to get an angry answer probably because you've just woke them up. Um, so I don't think it's a very measured approach. And I, to be fair, usually I do like what Gary Neville says. Um, like if you think back to the Super League, him and Jamie Carragher were, were mega vocal for us. Obviously, Gary Neville for United fans, but football fans in general... Um, Any time they got a chance on Sky Sports, they were both extremely vocal and um, I, I did like the way they went about that. His, his punditry as well is usually spot on um, and it's kind of a, I feel like it's a niche thing now for, for people to come out on football Twitter and be like, oh, he's losing it, he's not very good at punditry. Like, you know, like the hipster thing, just because we know how good he is at his job, people then like, like to go against the grain and say he's not very good at it and all this kind of stuff. But... He's one of the best for me, anyway, at least, um, at, at Punditry um, in general. And if, if you ask yourself truly, if someone gave you, you know, when, when we think back to his, his bias with Ole, which a lot of people was annoyed about, if, if someone gave you the best moment of their life, obviously being Solskjaer, um, you played football with him for 10 plus years, you're going to be biased. There's going to be a slight bias in there. 100% uh, if it was my best friend I'd try to protect him a bit more maybe that's not right maybe that's not professional and um, maybe people don't agree with that and I might be in the minority again but I understand why he would do it and this is again from a, from a human aspect um, you know maybe that's not professional maybe it isn't um, but again it is what it is another footballer just I know I'm going off on a bit of a tangent here but another footballer that uh, slash pundit, sorry, that annoys me is Paul Scholes. Now, what Paul Scholes says about Ragnick, saying he's a poor coach, he doesn't know what he's doing, he hasn't won anything, what's he done in the past 10 years, all this kind of stuff. Where was this energy when you were talking about Ole? When you asked about Ole, you'd never said any of this crap. And Ragnick's far more experienced in terms of coaching, how to run a club um, tactically. Everything, far more experienced. Uh, you know, he's looked at as a German professor in football. And, but whenever they got asked about Ole, he was like, oh, you know, he's doing a job. It's all on the players this time and blah, blah, blah. But now it's Rangnick there. It isn't on the players. Like, come on. You could put bloody God in charge of United at the minute and he'd still have all these problems. Uh, honestly, the, the, the punishment for Paul scores recently, have, again, another bad take for me. Like, I don't like listening to him. I prefer listening to that hard reason, if I'm being honest. I think he balances it out really well. Um, but look, football is all about opinions. I just wanted to come on here and give you a lot of my take on the current situation. Um, it is the international break, as you know, um, and you can imagine stuff like this will be magnified much more. Um, it's one of the reasons why it's not one of the reasons why I'm talking about it, but um, it's the reason why we've got time. Usually, you have a preview and, and stuff like that. So 
yeah, today I just wanted to focus on this. I thought it was important to talk about it. Um, but in regards to the rest of the week, you know, I reckon you're probably going to hear a lot of noise surrounding the next manager. Um, probably hear some stuff about Pogba. There'll be an article about Maguire or Rashford um, in in sort of retaliation to this this Neville thing that's come out. Someone, will, some journalists will jump on it. So let's see how many predictions I can get right by the end of this week. Uh, I reckon I'll get two out of three there that will come out. Um, be interesting to see but yeah just let, let me know um no, just to let you know sorry me and dan have a new show tomorrow so there will be a few articles that we'll be discussing maybe a big headline so keep your eye out for that one um and if you're wondering what the the rest of the week is like if you head over to our instagram page the schedule is put out on there now so you know monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday you know what content is on what days and um, that was put out this morning i think so you can head over to there to see yeah where your favorite content's going to be and yeah thank you for watching don't forget if you haven't already please click the link in our bio and subscribe to our youtube channel it means much more than you know trust me and um, you probably know anyway from podcasts you watch and stuff like that like any sort of support is is much needed and much appreciated so if you can share like comment subscribe it would mean the world to us uh, and we appreciate you very highly this is the reason why we're doing it for you lot that are watching so yeah my name's nick this is real red talk i will see you in the next one tomorrow for the new show with dan take care legends